In Texas, there is no bigger community activity than high school football. Greg was one of the best players. The momentum he had is unlike most students ever experience. I got a text message with Greg Kelly's photo, and it just said, do you know this kid? There was a crime committed, according to this four-year-old boy. I just turned numb. Like, this can't be true, this can't be true. And that's when a second victim came forward. Did the jury sign the defendant guilty? This trial was a sham. Everyone's saying, you got the wrong guy. Mr. Kelly has lied. Did you take a lie detector test? He passed every question but one. We've been on this journey to figure out what the truth is, and it's proven difficult at every turn. Initially, I was pretty convinced of his innocence. Now I wouldn't be surprised either way. All right, that takes us now to point three, the third of the three title fights, or the first certainly in the chronological order on Saturday night. Peter Yan, Piotr Yan, is your new UFC bantamweight champion. BC, one more time in the championship questions. Go first. In one year's time, assuming he stays active, assuming he fights top contenders, in one year's time, so July 13th, 2021, is Peter Yan the bantamweight champion? (laughs) <laughs> Great question. The fact that I don't know without a shadow of the doubt is what makes this division so great right now because I didn't think Aljamain Sterling member of this show at times, was as great as the performance he showed against Corey Sanhagen. And that's why you need the best to face the best. And that's why you need, uh, you know, shout out to Aldo for pouring out the jug for us. You don't need old guy names in this spot when you have this deep of a roster of prime guys right now. I don't know what Jan Sterling is going to look like. I do know it's the fight that needs to happen next. And I do know that because of this performance on Saturday night, I'm going to slightly favor Peter Yan, Peyotre, Peyote, however you want to look at it right now. Because, Luke, if he wasn't as good as he is across all the board, a great veteran like Jose Aldo was going to solve him. And the fact that we actually got to see Aldo hurt Yan and see Yan remain patient, show a great chin, stick to his game plan, and show you so many fashions, facets of his game – yet still sticking to his brand of being you know, an absolute savage of hunting you down and finishing you. This was obviously a breakout performance. He is who we thought he was, and I now need to see him against the very best in order. I love when you got a lot of old names in the division. You got Frankie Edgar. You got Mr. Faber. You got Cruz. You know, Dillashaw is coming back. You got a lot of options here. Can they just fight each other, though, for now? Can we find out who actually is the best of the best? And again, Henry Cejudo, I saw your tweets. Bro, you pulled out, okay? Like Luke in college many times. You pulled out. Let's let Aljo in there right now. In fact, I almost don't even feel great about putting the belt on Peotre Jan right now. I almost look at that as an interim belt. Until we see him against Aljo, that's going to define who is your real UFC Bantamweight champion. And one year from now, Luke, I got no idea. Our guy Sanhagen may slide right back in those DMs and steal it by then. Yeah, I mean, here's what he would have to do. Let's say in a year's time, he'll get three more fights. That means he would have to beat some kind of combination of Aljamain Sterling, Marlon Moraes, maybe Cody Garbrandt, maybe, uh, as you mentioned, Cody Sanhagen, uh, maybe, God, who else is in that division at the top there, if I'm not even thinking about... Uh, Marlon Pedro, Marais. Marlon yeah, Marlon Marais. Marais. Pedro Munoz could move up. I mean, there's just a lot of different ways that that could go. So is he the champion in a year? I don't think it's crazy to think that he could be. I think it's crazy to offer a degree of certainty about it. Because in the Sterling matchup, Sterling's going to have a hard time taking him down or finding the back. He had excellent scrambling skills in this fight and every other one john dotson had trouble taking him down i mean he is incredibly good at making that difficult but on the other hand aljamain sterling can fight from the outside he can stick and move maybe that's going to be an opportunity for him hard to do over five rounds but certainly possible marlon marais has all kinds of tricks himself power puncher power striker not the best cardio if he's getting backed up but still a force to be reckoned with and then maybe The punching power of Cody Garbrandt. The patience is there. Maybe it's Corey Sandhagen, and he gets up there and shows that his trickery and sleight of hand is what it is. Here's what I know. If he does end up beating three of those top names that I mentioned in one year's time, of course, he'll be the champion. A lot more than that. That will be 
absolutely incredible as an athletic achievement. 27 years old to do that from 27 to 28, beating those kinds of names. At that point, I think you could fully declare outright um, best bantamweight ever, probably somewhere along those lines. And certainly this would be the Peter Yan era. But I don't want to put the cart before the horse, BC. That is a lot of work to do. As you mentioned, TJ Dillashaw comes back. How will he look with his time off? Way too many unknowns. So let's focus the conversation a little bit on Aldo. Can we talk about that stoppage for just a second with Leon Roberts? I know everyone wants to kill Leon Roberts for this. And I'm not here to say that that fight shouldn't have been stopped earlier. It should have. But I I noticed something, man. When Glover Teixeira fought Anthony Smith... I noticed that every time the referee in that case, which was Jason Herzog, said to Anthony Smith to move, he did. And yet, here he is losing teeth, taking a beating, round after round, round after round. You're like, Jesus, man, what are you, what are you waiting for here? Because here's what I think, this is my theory, BC, what do you make of this? Maybe 10 years ago, guys weren't quite playing it up this way, but now they are. At the Guys have gotten better in fights about waiting for the referee to give instructions, fight back, or move, and then doing it. And they do it long enough, all that ends up happening is they just prolong their beating. But by the letter of the law, they're sort of meeting the intelligent defense standard. Referee asks for action, they provide it. Just enough to stop the fight. And the problem, as you can see, BC, is you can do that for a minute on end and get your ass whipped, take unnecessary damage with no hope of getting a victory, but you meet the intelligent defense standard. Is it time to question whether or not the intelligent defense standard is enough? Yeah, yeah, hell yeah, because it's not enough. You got your ass beat for a full minute. You're leaking blood all over the floor. I am with the idea of when it's a title fight or... When a veteran, and obviously, you know, Aldo does fit this description, when you have a veteran known for wanting to and willing to going out on their shield, you do give them a little bit extra, right? We always reference Brock Lesnar, Shane Carwin, and the great Josh Rosenthal for allowing that to go on, Brock rolling around. But Brock was also trying to throw back, trying to do different things. The problem with what you stated out, Luke, is Jose Aldo's not trying remotely to throw a strike or improve his positioning. He's doing the minimal amount of movement to not get the fight stopped or not to, you know, willingly put himself in a, in a spot where he has to quit. So, no, when you're watching a guy that we all love and adore get the piss beat out of him, stop the damn fight already, okay? Like, what, why are we even having this debate, Luke? Next topic. Should be a mercy stoppage kind of consideration in MMA. We don't have enough of them, and that was ugly to watch at Throw the, the end there. Hey, how about his corner? Throw the damn towel. All right. Yeah, I was going to say, Andre Pedernieris was giving him great advice between rounds. I was like, wow, that's really great corner work. And then this happens, and I'm just watching in horror like, Jesus, man, somebody I mean, Rocky could have saved Apollo against uh, Drago. We all know this, right? He lived and died with that <laughs> in, his, in his brain. In Texas, there is no bigger community activity than high school football. Greg was one of the best players. The momentum he had is unlike most students ever experience. I got a text message with Greg Kelly's photo, and it just said, do you know this kid? There was a crime committed, according to this four-year-old boy. I just turned numb. Like, this can't be true, this can't be true. And that's when a second victim came forward. Did the jury find the defendant guilty? This trial was a sham. Everyone's saying, you got the wrong guy. Mr. Kelly has lied. Did you take a lie detector test? Passed every question but one. We've been on this journey to figure out what the truth is, and it's proven difficult at every turn. Initially, I was pretty convinced of his innocence. Now I wouldn't be surprised either way. 